everyone, it's Hannah here from Hand Down Crochet and today we are making these herringbone moss stitch mittens which I really need to think of a better, more jazzy name for but hey ho! They are part of a cosy collection that we are releasing in January 2022. So if you've come here to join the crochet along with Michelle, Brianna and myself, then you're in the right place and we are delighted to have you. If you're joining after that, then no worries at all. I'm going to be popping the information below, the links as to where you can find the pattern on my blog, where you can get the PDF if you'd like to, all the materials, all that kind of stuff that will all be in the description below. So pop along grab the pattern and then come back and we'll get making. So as you can see, I've made these mittens in all sorts of sizes. So there'll be a size that will fit someone or other that you're making them for. Uh, we've got the medium adult that fits me really nicely. And then there is a larger one, but I haven't got around to making that yet. And then we have these other smaller sizes as you go right down to a baby one, which is just basically a teeny mitten without, without the thumb. So the mittens have a super simple construction. All we need to do to start with is work rows and rows of the ribbing section and then join that together to make the band for the cuff. And then we start to work in rounds and you go round and round that cuff and you work up to where you need to split for the thumb. You're going to leave some stitches empty. I'll show you that in a bit. And then you're going to work the hand section, which you can adjust for yourself. You can add or subtract rows, rounds there. And then we'll pop back to the thumb and we'll add that in afterwards. And there's also the option for if you want to make this fingerless, you can stop at whichever point you like and just do a finishing round. And the same for the thumb, just finish it wherever you want it to be. And you've got yourself a pair of fingerless mitts. So the stitch that I decided to use for these mittens is a herringbone half double crochet. That's a US herringbone half double crochet or half treble in UK terms. And the great thing about herringbone stitches is if you work them in rows, they slant to one side and then slant to the other. So you'll see in Michelle's hat pattern that that's what happens with hers. It kind of goes this way, that way, this way, that way. But if you work them in rounds, they actually just add a load of texture and sit really nicely on top of each other. Uh, but not only that, I've, because I've used them in a moss stitch style, so you're going one round, you're going to do a stitch, do a chain, do a stitch, do a chain, do a stitch, do a chain. You're actually then just going to work into and over those chain spaces and you're going to add even more texture because it looks like there's loads of rounds and loads of stitches, but there really isn't. It's really simple once we get going and I'm going to show you how. To make the mittens, you're going to need some double knit weight yarn and I've chosen Swish from We Crochet, which is really beautiful. There's so many lovely colours to choose from um, and it's 100% super wash wool. Um, so it really does stand up to whatever use these mittens you want to put these mittens through. But you just do, do have to take good care of it. You'll also need um, a 4.5 millimetre or G plus crochet hook. Um, and this is part of my lovely set to Caspian crochet hook set. So it sizes 3.5 millimetre through to 6.5 millimetre in here. Um, or the hook that matches the gauge. And then a pair of scissors and a needle for your ends. And that's it. Right, so to begin with, we are going to make this rib and this cuff section here. And we're going to work it back and forth in rows and then we will join it to make it into a round. Now, it is a slip stitch rib. And I know that lots of people feel like they're a bit allergic to a slip stitch rib, but I promise you it's absolutely worth the effort. It will look beautiful. And as you see, it pulls it in nicely and it tapers it and fits it really nicely to the wrist. So if there ever is a place to make the effort to work a slip stitch rib, then this is it. So the other thing is, it's really simple and easy to do. But what I've discovered is that these hooks are absolutely perfect for a slip stitch rib because you can see how pointy this is. Don't know any other way of saying it. And when we go through, I'll show you how easily it then catches because I always find that slip stitches are tricky to get hold of, that very last one in the row. So we are going to begin with a slip knot on your hook. And then for the size that we're going to make, I'm going to make the small adult or the teen size. We are going to chain 11. So one, two, three, four, five, Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and eleven. 
and then we're going to turn because remember we're working in rows and I'm going to work in the back bumps here and I'm going to work a slip stitch into the second from the hook and each along. So that's one slip stitch, two, three, four, and it will be easier to see once there's actually more crochet. It's tricky, isn't it, to start with to actually see what you're doing. As long as you end up with 10 slip stitches here, then you're, in, you're doing it right. And that's your first row complete. And then we're going to turn and you're going to chain one, but chain do that chain one fairly tightly. And I do always do it when I've turned my row. It just, for some reason, makes it sit neater for me, but do whatever works for you. And then you're going to be looking at the back loop. So turn it onto its end so you can see that nice V of the stitch. And then you're going to be working into the back loop only, and you're going to work a slip stitch into the back loop of each stitch. So I always keep count here count at the end of every row because in slip stitches it's really easy to miss one especially the last and it's also really important i think to keep your tension really even here because it's very easy too to um let the ends go really wonky and wayward so if you don't do that chain one fairly tightly at the beginning it will start slanting. I mean, that doesn't really matter necessarily for this project because we're then going to be working into the end of it and that will neaten it up quite nicely. And then in that very last one there. So that's two rows complete. And then you're going to turn. And basically that is it. For the whole of the rib, you're going to chain one and then slip stitch into the back loop of each. So we'll just do another row here, just to show you that last one as well. The thing I've realised when I'm uh, videoing things is that actually, <laughs> obviously to get the camera and everything in is it, it's at arm's length. So <laughs> I would normally have this possibly quite up near my nose so that I can see what I'm doing. Um, and it's, uh, you have a go at it. It's really tricky to do it at arm's length. But there we go. Just know that I'm much better than it looks here. <laughs> and so this is what I mean for this very last stitch. It's really tricky sometimes to get hold of it if you're trying to push through this way from the top. So these hooks are really cool because you can just actually just scoop it up from underneath and then it sort of raises it enough for you to pop the hook in. Or well, that's what I found works really well for me anyway. So there we go, that's another row done. So it really doesn't take that long, but you do not want to watch me make all of this because for this size, we're going to do 40 rows of rib. So if you carry on and do the amount of rows for the size that you have chosen, um, and then I'll meet you back here and we will join it together and start working the main body in rounds. Righty ho. So once you have made the amount of rows that is correct for the size that you want, we're now going to turn this into the band, the, the cuff for your glove. So the way we're going to do that is you're going to finish where you are there and you're going to lift this section up to meet because what we're going to do is join this bit here to that bit there. And I'm gonna come right up so you can see where I am. And oh, that helps me actually as well. We're going to chain one, just so that you've got some space and you can see where you are and what you're up to. And whereas normally, if you were seaming, you would go into the foundation chain or the first set of stitches that you did. Actually, what I'm gonna suggest here is that you go into the back bump of the next set of stitches that you see. Because, I don't know if you've ever noticed it, but when ribs are joined, you get this horrible lumpy join if you do it into the foundation chain. 
Whereas I've done it here, how I'm suggesting to do it, and you can barely see the join. So although that will be hidden on the wrong side, um, or like on the inside of your mitten, you really can't see the join anywhere near as much as, um, as you would. In fact, you can't see it, I can't see it at all there. Um, you, won't, you won't see it anywhere near as much as you would if you were joining it conventionally. So the stitch that we're going to go into is this one here. So that is the row after the foundation. And you're going to slip stitch into the back loop of your last row. And that will make your join a lot, lot neater. Just slip stitch through the whole thing. And then finding the stitches here should be okay because we're going to go into the next stitch there that you've got a bump of. Basically, as long as you don't go into the foundation chain, it will look much neater. It doesn't really matter which other one you go into, if that makes sense. And you'll slip stitch through there. And just go all the way along the cuff, joining it like that. It is really fiddly, but it is really worth it. So up, up to you. Maybe try it with the foundation chain and see how neat it looks for you. And then try a few stitches like this and just compare the two. But one of my missions in my design for crochet is to try and find ways of making things just look as neat and like seamless as possible. Because I hate that. I hate when things like just stick out like a sore thumb. But that does sometimes mean taking a bit more time and fiddling around with things a bit more. So I completely understand if you don't fancy doing that. And then this very last one is sometimes tricky to, or tricky -er to find. There we are, got it, okay. And then again, the other side, just make sure you get it right into that back loop there of that one. So there we are, that's joined in, but that's going to be the wrong side. We're not going to see this side. And then what we're going to do is, don't get yourself in a tangle, pull, pull your yarn up so you don't need to worry about your hook there and losing your stitches. And then you're going to pop that through like that so you have got the right side facing you. And there is your seam. Nice and neat and barely noticeable once you get all the stitches into it and we start working in the round. So now this tail is done with and you can either work it in now into your stitches or you can leave it and sew it in afterwards, whichever you prefer. I think I might sew it in afterwards. And now we're ready to start the main body of the mitten to get up to where the thumb splits. And we're gonna work in rounds now. So for the first round of the main hand section, we are going to set the amount of stitches that will go up until the thumb. So for this size, there's going to be 40. And for every size that you're doing, it's gonna be the same amount of stitches as you've done rows for the rib. So we've got 40 here, 40 rows, and we're gonna end up with 40 stitches in the round. So we begin, by chaining one and then we're going to work into the side of the rows and again in my bid to make things as neat as possible what I've done is actually work into the stitches so we're going to cover over these first stitches so we don't get these bumpy bits in and we're going to work into the sides of the stitches but go into this one here not this first one here that you can see this next one here. So it does mean that we lose a stitch on the rib, but I have added extra for the length and all that kind of jazz. So don't worry about that, but go into the middle of this stitch here. That's where we're gonna go. And you're gonna yarn over as if you're gonna work a half double crochet, but it's gonna be a herringbone half double crochet. So pop your hook through, and it's gonna pull up there into the middle here. And before, whereas with a, a normal half double crochet, you'd then yarn over and pull through all three, we're first of all gonna pull that one through one. And then you're going to yarn over and you're gonna complete your stitch. So that's a herringbone half double crochet. And you're gonna use that stitch throughout the whole of these mittens. So now we're going to chain one and we're gonna skip the side of this next row. 
So basically what we're going to do is look at, for this round, working in these downward Vs here that we have. So then we've skipped this and we're now going to work a herringbone half double crochet in this stitch here. And so you pull through and then yarn over and pull through your two. And you chain one and then you skip the next and then you work into the next stitch here. So essentially where you put your hook, just be consistent. So if you decide to go in the, the top of the stitches, then don't worry, that's absolutely fine as long as you are consistent. And we're going to work that all the way around. Now, I will say that this is the trickiest round of the whole thing to do. So don't worry if it takes you ages or if you get cross with it, like I sometimes do. But you're going to end up with 20 for this size, half, herringbone half double crochets and 20 chain one spaces. And so that herringbone stitch is you set up as if you're going to do a half double crochet, but you're going to pull that loop through and then complete with just the two that you have. And just carry on all the way around. And then a chain one, and then you're going to slip stitch in the first to join. Now, really importantly, go back and count all of those stitches. Go back and count to make sure that you have the amount of stitches that is right for the size that you're making. So now for round two, we need to set up to make this into um, a moss stitch. So we're going to chain two, and a chain two at the beginning of any round is always gonna count as a chain one and then a chain one space for the next round because we'll, we'll work into that. That will all become clear in a moment. And then we're going to skip this stitch, this first stitch, and working over the top of that chain one space there, you see the first chain one? We're going to work into the side of the row underneath because we worked into alternate sides of rows, didn't we, for this, this first round. And now we're going to basically fill in the gaps and we're going to go into this one. Now, this is a slightly different setup. You haven't got that nice V space, but if you pull it, let's pull it and see, you can work. I normally work into this space here and that makes them nice and level. But again, you can work wherever feels comfortable for you and that sits nicely within your, your cuff. And then we're going to chain one. We're going to skip this next stitch and then we're going to work into the next side of the side of the row of the cuff here that we skipped. So again, just wherever feels right and comfortable and is consistent for you. Chain one, skip the next stitch and then down into the side of the cuff again. And so all you have to do is keep repeating that all the way around until you get back to your chain two for the beginning of that round. And then when we come to the end of the round, you've finished on an, an actual stitch as opposed to a chain one, and then you're going to slip stitch into that chain two that you did to begin with. And so there we are, that's the second round. And that's going to be, the cuff is now sorted and set and you've got the right amount of stitches for the whole of your mitten now. So they're the tricky rounds. Those two rounds are the trickiest bits of the whole thing, I think. So if you've done that, hooray, well done. And we're ready to do the nice straightforward bit now. So we are going to work the half double crochet herringbone moss stitch now which is such a mouthful, but I don't know any other way of saying it. So we are going to chain one, and now we're going to work into the back loop only. And so we're going to work a herringbone half double crochet 
over the top of this chain space that we have and down into the back loop of that stitch there which is almost impossible to see and to show you but I will try much closer on the next one and then we're going to chain one and you're going to skip the next stitch so it's just like a normal um, linen or moss stitch now for where you put your stitches so you're going to go into this bit here so over the, that's that chain one you can ignore that get over the top of it and then you're going to go into the back loop only of that stitch below and you'll see if it's in the right place because you'll still have this bar sat across and then you'll also have another bar because it's a herringbone stitch so that's what your texture should look like you chain one skip the next one and then herringbone half double crochet into the back loop of the next stitch. And you just work that all the way around. And again, it's one of those things that once you get into the rhythm of it, you'll be absolutely fine. And then at the end of that round, we're going to slip stitch in the first to join. And then you're ready to start round four. So round four is going to be chain two, and that's going to be um, a, a chain one that doesn't count, and then a chain one for a chain one space. And then you're going to skip this stitch that's directly underneath. And again, you're gonna then work over the top of this chain one space and into the stitch below. So back loop only still, and you're gonna work a herringbone half double crochet there. And a chain one, skip the next stitch, and then a herringbone half double crochet, chain one, skip one. And so you just keep going like that all the way around. So the two rows there that we've just worked, so three and four, they're just like an offset of each other and they just, you just start the row, round slightly differently. The rest of the round is as plain sailing as the other. And then at the end of the round, we're gonna slip stitch into that chain two to join it. And so rounds three and rounds four are now the set pattern. You're going to repeat rounds three and rounds four um, until the pattern tells you to stop, basically. So it's a different amount of repeats for each different size, and that will be this portion here of the glove. The only exception is the fact that these tiny baby versions, they don't obviously have a thumb. So just follow the pattern until it says for the, for the decreasing of the top. So they're the only, only difference there. The rest of them you need to carry on until we're going to split for the thumb. So if you go ahead and work rounds three and rounds four until we get to here, um, and then we'll join back together and we will split for the thumb. So now that we've worked the main hand section, we are ready to split for the thumb and then we can work both the thumb and the top of the hand. But do remember, if you're making the smallest size, don't worry, just keep going until you get the decrease because you're not going to make a thumb at all in that size. But for this size, what we're going to do is I haven't yet joined for this last round. So you're going to have a chain two at the beginning here of whichever size you're making. There'll be a chain two here and you're going to basically join that to a specific stitch around to then make a space for the thumb. So for this size, it's going to be joining to the 13th stitch um, from the hook. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. So we're going to pop your hook through there and your hook through there, and then you're going to slip stitch through the two of them. So then that gives you this space here for your thumb, it's going to become your thumb, and then this space here for the top of the hand. So this is now we're going to obviously have decreased the amount of stitches that we're doing here. So that is for one side, one thumb. 
so obviously if you're left-handed or right-handed it's going to be you're going to make them in mirror image of each other so I'll just say one one hand and the other hand rather than left and right so that's for one thumb shaping and then for when you get to make the other mitten just to make sure that your cuff, this seam, sits on the um, inside of your hand as opposed to sitting on the outside. You're going to join this to this corresponding stitch in this direction. So the numbers are all in the pattern for you, but basically it's going to be the equal amount. So you could count back from this way if you wanted, or you could count around this way. And you're going to join it along in this fashion. And then you're going to start working your stitches around here. And so all that means is it just moves the cuff one way or the other way for the opposite hands. So for this, this version here, I'm going to join the first way I did. So to the 13th. So this part now is nice and familiar because all we're going to be doing is repeating that set pattern, that rounds three and rounds four that we have just been doing. So you're going to chain one. And then you're going to be working down into this stitch here and you're going to get going with your moss stitch. And so the pattern will tell you how many stitches you should now have. So do make sure to check that you just work in that established pattern that we have been doing all the way up for the main hand section already. And so before you join your round, just have a quick check and make sure that you've got the amount that you should have. And you skip this last one and then you join into the first one. And then we repeat the next round with our chain two to start with and skip that one. And then off we go into the moss stitch. So we now just need to keep repeating those two rounds that we've just worked for as many rounds as the pattern says or as many rounds as you'd like to before you start decreasing for the top. Well, the other option is if you're going to make these into a fingerless pair of mittens, just keep going until it feels comfortable wherever you'd like yours to sit. And then what I would do, you could leave the final round um, as it is there um, open, but you'll have these chain one spaces. So an option for making it fingerless for both um, going the final round of the main hand and the final round of your thumb would be to fill in those, fill in those gaps. So the only difference will be that you will do um, herringbone stitches where you would normally do herringbone stitches. And then where you would work a chain one, Instead of working a chain one, work a single crochet, a US single crochet in that stitch and that will close that gap. So no chain one spaces and then a herringbone moss stitch there and then a single crochet in the next. So then that will just close up that round for you and just make a much nice, neater edge, I think. Um, so if that's what you want, if, that, if you want to make a fingerless version, then that's how I would finish the final round. But in our case, we're going to carry on working that established set pattern until we're ready to decrease for the top of the hand. So if you go ahead and do that and I'll meet you back here and we will finish the top. Now that we've worked the correct amount of rounds for this section here, we're ready to decrease and close the top of the mitten. So what we are going to do is basically do a few um, stitches together. And so we're going to chain one and this very first one here, we are going to herringbone, <laughs> I don't even know if I can say this all out loud, herringbone half double crochet moss stitch two together. There we go. <laughs> Which basically means to do this. So you already know how to do a herringbone uh, moss stitch. So you're going to start it off and you're going to pull your yarn through here. And then you're going to yarn over before you finish this stitch you're going to pop it into the next one so you're going to completely ignore this one here that we'd normally chain one over and you're going to pop it into the next one the back loop of it oh i forgot the back loop in the uh, <laughs> in the description and then you'll pull that through and then pull it through because it's going to be a herringbone stitch so you've got the start of two herringbone stitches there and then you're going to yarn over and pull it through all of them 
So there we go, a lot easier in practice than it is to actually say. And then what we're going to do is we're going to chain one and we're going to skip the next stitch and then we're going to more stitch as normal in, in the next however many it tells you for your size. So for this size it's going to be five times we're going to do that. Three, four, and then five, and then we are going to half double crochet, herringbone, moss stitch two together in the back loop only. <laughs> I don't know why I find that so funny. So here we are, start our first, and then yarn over, completely ignore this next stitch, and go into this next one, start your herringbone and then yarn over and finish the whole thing. And then you're going to chain one and carry on around as the pattern tells you for the amount of times. But this, this time around it's a lot easier because it will just come to an end when you get to your, when you meet back at your first stitch. And then we need to slip stitch in our first stitch to join. And we'll have pulled in a bit here. You can see the shaping at the top has started to happen. And then our second decrease round, we're going to work our the stitch together in a slightly different place. So we're going to start normally by chaining two, and then we're going to moss stitch it as we would normally for the amount of times that it tells you, but just watch out here because you've got that stitch together, which actually, so the next stitch feels like it's a long way away and it's there. So for this size, we are, let me just check, we are doing four times. So it's two, three, and four. And so then we do our stitch together. Let's call it that. <laughs> so like that. And you'll find that that one is just before the one from below the, the together stitch there. And then you're going to chain one and you're going to moss stitch as normal up for the amount of times it tells you, but for this time it means it's up until the last two stitches because the last two stitches you're going to moss stitch together. That might be here it is. So then this stitch and that stitch, we are going to work together completely ignoring that stitch there in the middle. And then you are going to slip stitch to join. So again, it pulls it in just a teeny bit more each time. And then the next set of decrease rounds are different for different sizes. So you must go and check the pattern because it won't make sense if you do, are doing other sizes and you do it exactly as I'm doing it here. So, but for this one, we are going to chain one and you're going to moss stitch together all the way around. So for this size, we're going to do that five times. That's one. And so no chain ones in between at all. No chain ones in this round. Two. And as you turn the corner, it is quite tricky because you've got a together one there. So that feels again, a long way away. So just make sure you find your stitches. That's three. And four. And 
then the final one is going to be five. But as I say, it's slightly different that round for different sizes. So just make sure you check. And then you're going to slip stitch into the first one to join. And then you're now ready to break your yarn here at the top. And then I normally pop my hook through and especially with this nice end of this hook as it is and grab your yarn and pull it through and then it'll be there ready for seaming just because I don't like it flapping around on the outside while I'm then making the thumb and then I can seam all together at the end. And then you'll just sew around from the inside, from the wrong side um, to, to weave in your ends there. So that's the top of the mitten done. So now we're ready to pop the thumb on. And to do that, we're going to turn over and join to where the face split. And you're going to join in this first chain one space here that you have. Now it is attached to the main body. So just make sure you get it in the right place because this is the first stitch that we're going to work into here underneath there. But the back loop only, obviously, just into there. So we will join our yarn here. And you already know the set pattern for this, but we are going to be adding in a stitch. So bear with me. We're going to chain one and then we're going to work in the back loop only of that where I just showed you there. You're going to work a herringbone stitch, chain one, skip one, and then into the next. So you just work that all the way around the thumb. And then make sure you catch this stitch here. And then we're going to chain one. And we're actually going to add the stitch here in. It's very tricky to show you. Let's get rid of this end into here so it's not in our way. We're actually going to add a stitch into the center where they join here. You're going to, it makes it look neater and also it gives the thumb a good size. A herringbone stitch there. And then you're going to chain one and then you're ready to join to your first stitch. So you should have two more stitches than you actually had spaces for in your, for your count of your thumb. And that's the first round of the thumb done. And then we're just going to carry on in our set moss stitch pattern. So we're now ready to chain two to start. And then just go round and round for as many times as the pattern tells you until it's time to decrease. So if you go ahead and do that, but of course you can make the thumb again, the same as we said for the main body of the hand, make it as um, long as you like um, to make it comfortable for you. And if you're going to do it as a fingerless one, then just do the same closing round that I showed you with the um, single crochets instead of the chain one spaces, wherever you would like that to be. And the very last thing that we need to do then is to decrease and close the top of the thumb. So it is again, like the top of the, the actual hand, it's completely different for different sizes. So make sure you go to the pattern and work out, but the, the principle is the same. It's the same as when we close the top, you're gonna to do some stitches together, crochet some together, um, and then over either one or two rounds. So to begin with, for the size that we're making here, we're going to chain one, and we're going to work as we normally would up until the last two uh, moss stitches
and then we're basically going to um, decrease by crocheting those last two moss stitches together as we did um, in the top. So that might be here, it is. So we are going to start in that one and go into the next one and complete the stitch. And then that will give us one to join with together. Chain one and slip stitch to join. I was just checking there because I thought I'd gone horribly wrong, but actually no, I can count. And so then for this final round, we are just going to moss stitch together all the way around. You're going to ignore um, any chain one spaces that you would have done previously, and you're going to ignore any stitches in between. You're just going to go straight down into where your moss stitch wants to sit. And you're going to do two, two sets together, but I won't I won't lie, it is tricky to <laughs> and fiddly to find out where you're going, but it's really worth it because I think it gives a really nice, neat um, finish to the top of your the mitten and the thumb. And there's not many, you don't have to do it many times. It's not that far round, is it? But this one, I think, is the trickiest one, the last one, because it feels like you've run out of stitches because you've already done two together on the round before, but actually there is one there. Again, this is another example of um, at arm's length, but normally I'd have it under my nose. <laughs> And then we just need to slip stitch into the first one, which you can do backwards, as it were. Sometimes that's easier. And then you'll break your yarn, pull it through, and then scoop it through. Um, or at this point, you are actually ready to weave in your end. So you could turn it inside out um, and do it that way now. Or you can do it like that. And then you're ready to wear your glove. So obviously you need to then repeat the process for the other side and just take note in the pattern because the instructions are basically the same but you just need to remember to work your thumb in a different place. That's the only difference with it really. So I really hope you've enjoyed joining me for this tutorial and if the crochet along is still going along then please do come and join us. We have an exclusive ebook that all of the patterns in the crochet along are in along with extra bits and pieces and treats for you. So do come and find that if you'd like it. The pattern is on my blog and it's also available as a PDF to, to purchase and download. Whichever you prefer is absolutely great by me. The one thing that would be amazing is if you would subscribe and tap the bell button because then you'll get notified when I release new patterns and tutorials. And the other important thing is to say, come and show me, come and find me. I'm hand down crochet anywhere and everywhere you want to look. Um, come and show me your mittens. I would really, really love to see them all. Thank you so much for joining me. And until next time, goodbye.